hotter days, more intense storms, longer droughts, floods, and erosion. Those are among the many impacts of climate change in the region over the years. And a recent release from the Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change provides data to support the climate trends being experienced on the ground today. Belize and also the Caribbean region, the major extremes that have been affecting us and will continue to affect us um, are hot extremes. Like you said, it's getting hotter. Today is also a hot day. But hot extremes is one, one of the climate extremes that are increasing. And also um, heavy precipitation and flooding, drought. Um, in the last report, there is high confidence that agricultural and um, ecological drought, as well as meteorological and um, hydrological drought, are increasing and will continue to increase um, with our current um, path and even future scenarios. And also, there has been um, and there is expected to be a further increase in the most intense tropical cyclones, category three and um, above, with this um, new report. The IPCC's sixth assessment report addresses the most up-to-date physical understanding of the climate system and climate change. This science-based information, which is supported by data provided by the National Meteorological Service, helps to influence climate change policy in Belize. One of the primary findings is that climate change is a result of human activity. Climate change is um, human caused. So that is one of the resounding um, findings in this particular report. And it also highlighted what was previously found in past um, IPCC assessment reports, such as the special report on 1.5. It just basically re um, reiterated what was already found. And also new information um, has been gathered is that there has been global warming, the earth and the climate system is getting warmer. And currently we are at 1.1 degrees um, of warming. Limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees by 2050 is part of the foundation of the Paris Agreement for which governments and policymakers signed on to back in 2016. If the world does not reduce its carbon footprint and greenhouse gas emissions, that goal may be surpassed. Even with the lowest possible emission scenarios, it is possible, but achieving and attaining um, 1.5 degrees of global warming is still within reach. And um, so if we do what is right, reduce our carbon emissions, then we don't necessarily have to surpass 1.5 and even reach two or even some of the higher degrees of warming based on other um, um, scenarios of climate change. Even more frightening is that coastal communities have been washed away literally due to sea level rising. As it currently stands, sea level is up by 20 centimeters across the region. If mitigating efforts are not enforced, it can be by as much as three meters by 2050. And it's already um, affecting Belize in particular. And um, by 2050, if on the low emission um, pathway scenario, we could be at 0 0.5 meter. Globally, the world, ha the sea level rise has been about 20 centimeters, but um, with these future projections and the different scenarios, we can look at, if we don't reduce our carbon footprint, look at an increase in sea level rise with about between one meter to three meters, and that is a lot. 20 centimeters is already causing significant damage, especially for um, small islands and um, Caribbean cities and other coastal communities. So imagine what it will be if we reach the one meter, even one meter, or three, um, three meters and more based on the higher um, emission scenarios. Three meters, that's almost 10 feet high. And with Belize City already below sea level, this is not good news. And so our leaders have joined forces with other small island development states to hold larger countries accountable for the GHG emissions and reduce the impacts of global warming. It all depends on our um, carbon footprint and what we do in the near term, which is between the years 2021 to um, 2040. So what we do between the next 20 years will be critically important for us. Dwayne Moody for News 5.